Hi, I'm Michelle Bege with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. What was the result of the first Andean condor census in Colombia? We'll have the answer later. Latin America is facing the worst moment in its fight against the pandemic. In Argentina, the Minister of Health confirmed last week that the health system is bordering on collapse. Brazil has exceeded 400,000 deaths, and in Mexico, things could be even worse than reported. Researchers say the death toll due to COVID could be almost three times higher than the 218,000 deaths reported by the government. The most jaw-dropping numbers, in the end of April, Latin America accounted for 35% of all coronavirus deaths in the world, despite the fact that it accounts for 8% of the world population. In Brazil, investigations continue, and a nation mourns after one of the country's deadliest police raids in the last five years. At least 28 people were killed in a shootout in a favela of Rio de Janeiro. The operation took place because police had received reports that drug traffickers were recruiting minors. But citizens are left reeling after their homes turned into a battlefield as police chased gang members. With almost two weeks of ongoing protests in Colombia over issues such as higher taxes and health care reform, citizens and businesses are feeling the effects. Colombia's National Federation of Merchants, known as FENALCO, says commerce has lost up to $250 million due to 12 days of continual protests. Sales have reportedly gone down by 90 percent thanks to COVID lockdowns and citizens staying home to avoid massive protests on the streets. Now let's go to Peru. Dan Collins has the latest from that country's upcoming presidential elections. Michelle, vaccinations have got off to a slow start in Peru, largely to do with allegations of corruption. So far, around 1.4 million Peruvians have received one dose. That's about 4 percent of the population. With the presidential elections runoff ballot just a month away, the two candidates are pledging to fight the pandemic. Leftist Pedro Castillo said he had met with the Russian ambassador and had a deal for 20 million doses of the Russian Sputnik vaccine. While his opponent, Keiko Fujimori, who has spent months in pretrial detention for corruption allegations, has promised to vaccinate all Peruvians by the end of the year. OK, now let's look at what stories we're following for next week. First, as El Salvador and Guatemalan leaders have removed several senior court judges known for their fights against corruption, the U.S. administration might be readying their own ways to increase pressure. One of those ways, putting together a name-shaming list of corrupt officials in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras who would be declined entry into the United States. We'll be following that. Second, the South American Football Confederation launched the official song of the regional football championship Copa America. The problem is that the tournament may be in limbo right now. Argentina and Colombia were supposed to be co-hosts, but Argentina has said they may pull out altogether because of COVID concerns. Meanwhile, Colombia's continued national strike has made it impossible to host recent soccer games. Copa America is supposed to begin one month from now. And third, a train system connecting Bolivia and Chile is being re-established after 16 years. The train, with 16 cars full of coal, went from Bolivia to Chile. It is supposed to do the return trip with soybeans back to the Bolivian town of Santa Cruz. The binational rail system is going through trial runs now, so we'll keep an eye on that. And now the answer to the news trivia. It was A. There are only 63 condors in Colombia, according to the first ever National Condor Census. This majestic bird is close to extinction. It is one of the world's largest birds with a wingspan of three meters. And another interesting fact, it can live a long life. Barring threats, it can surpass 70 years of age. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.